our mission, and we choose to accept it, is zero injuries and zero environmental impact. A healthy workforce and environment is key to our nation's continued success. The Mission Zero podcast is a deep dive with the industry's top experts into the health, safety and environmental aspects of today's workplace. Our mission is to be a platform for new ideas and strategies that, when implemented, will improve our safety, our environment and how we govern out business. We are making the world safer and we're going to have fun doing it. Okay, welcome everybody back to a new episode of the Mission Zero podcast. I am in beautiful Midland, Texas today. Uh, my guest today is Seth Moore of Catalyst Energy, and uh, I've been trying to uh, call on you guys in the past and impressed with your company, and uh, you guys are growing really fast. So, Seth, I uh, usually start my show off with uh, allowing my guests to tell me a little bit about your background, where you came from, as much as you want to share, and whatever brought you to where you are today. Thank you, Jeff. I, I've been at this. It's hard to it's hard to believe, but I completed 38 years in this industry last August. So um, I've been at it a while. Um, uh, you know, got the opportunity to work all over the world and um, a lot of different segments of our industry and really thought I was kind of at the end of my career and um, had a had a partner that I'd worked with before called and said, hey, let's let's do something different. And um, so here we are. You know, it's been it's been fun. I've had a very supportive uh, wife and family, you know, when you, I didn't really realize at the time uh, the full rigors of a startup and how, how that, um, you know, how that can um, command so much of your, t demand so much of your time. Yeah. But, uh, but here we are and it's been, it's, it's been fun. Even, even considering the COVID and that whole, uh, you know, turmoil that we that, that the whole industry went through and, the, and really uh, not just our industry but but mm -hmm. others so it's been um it's been been great to assemble a team of, of innovative thinkers and and put them together and and uh see us progress down the path that we've been on so and you were originally from louisiana i am i i have uh raised in louisiana started my career in louisiana i was with um a big red company, as I like to say, for 28 years, <laughs> um, and and it was great. I I enjoyed um enjoyed my my time there, and um, they were a, a great company. Met a lot of great people, a lot of great customers, and and made friends that, that have have lasted to this day. Yeah. Um, so I, I left there and and went to Texas, and then kind of all over the globe from there, and came back and ended up in Colorado and, and made it from Colorado to, to West Texas. Uh, we've been here for eight years, which is probably about the longest I've been in any one spot. Wow. And um, I tell everybody, I, I love it here. It's, it's, um, people say, really, you really like it? We do. People are friendly. The, uh, the atmosphere, work atmosphere is good. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the climate is, um, you know, mild winters and um, the, the summers are, are are hot, but you know, in the afternoons it cools off. And it's a dry get, heat, as they say. Dry heat, yeah. You know, look, <laughs> I go, to, I go back, I go back to Louisiana now, and I'm just yeah. dripping. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not used to it anymore. And when I left and, Tech, I hated going back home to Georgia. I was like, oh my goodness, it was all right going from humidity to dryness, but going from dryness right. to humidity oh, is suffering. Yeah. That's right. So okay. And uh, you have, uh, how many children do you have, Jeff? I have four children. I have two grandchildren now. Oh, wow. Okay. And I've got, um, I've got uh, uh, two son-in-laws. I've got a daughter-in-law on the way. Okay. Um, and the two grandbabies, that changes your, your perspective a bit. And that's yeah. Been, that's been great to, to get to see, see that and nice. uh, experience that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, we, we've been blessed. Yeah. Blessed immensely. But you you did unfortunately have to suffer the indignity of being an A and M guy yeah. whose child went to UT. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you try to raise them right. But <laughs> oh, no, it's funny. It's, it, it makes for for great great conversation around the Thanksgiving table. Oh, great so, banter, back right. and forth, that's back right. and forth. Hey, you know, Texas is blessed with a lot of really good schools. Oh, so sure. Yeah. I own. Um, uh, so it's all fun and games. Yeah, it is. Those people yeah. take it seriously aren't worth the that's time. That's right. Uh, so you said you had, uh, you know, one thing uh, that uh, caught my attention, you've been in, 
you said almost every single area of oil and gas there is. You've worked in a lot of different, uh, you know, areas or what, I don't know what you would call them, but right. different uh, it functions. Is segments of the of the kind segments. of the energy services side, mm -hmm. not uh, not so much on the operator side, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, from you know pressure pumping, cementing, hydraulic fracturing, uh, tools, wireline, um, expandables. Um, after I left uh, Halliburton, um, got a chance to work on. Um, Kind of the rig side of the business we had some drilling rigs and, and completion rigs work over rigs coil tubing um fishing and rental pipe uh pipe fishing and rental and and just different segments that i had not gotten to experience um and and those all have their unique challenges and they have their their specific values that they create for customers and um that's been it was interesting to to, to be in that that part and then Got to deal with chemicals and uh, you know some of the the chemical side of the business, which Halliburton is no stranger to. Sure. But um, certainly, when you look at it as a standalone business, that's um, you know uh, you think about it a little bit different. And uh, there's some some unique uh, uh, challenges and advantages to being focused. Um, then when we uh, got the call to to consider you know a, a, an opportunity to start start this company catalyst um it was kind of getting back to my roots so to speak and um enjoyed i really enjoyed getting back to what you kind of feel i feel like i built a career preparing you yeah know, for this well that's not yeah that's awesome so, that's great to hear um, the um <clears throat> um i feel like you know some certain companies and i know slumberger does this and <clears throat> Uh, it, there is really a great benefit to seeing the other segments and what they do, right? So you sure. understand, uh, you know, what you do as a part of making a, uh, a hole in the ground turn into energy and, and then understanding what everyone else does. And I've said that on my, this podcast before several times where, uh, you know, I don't think any person outside of oil and gas could comprehend the complexity of drilling an oil well and getting it to fruition and making it work. It is involved technology beyond belief, uh, you know, ingenuity beyond belief. And to know it all in 38 years or to know a lot of it in 38 years is something that would prepare you to lead a company <laughs> and eventually in the end, right, wasn't it? What countries did you work in? Ooh, um, I, uh, I spent, a, I, lived, I lived in India with my, with my family actually for three years, almost three years. That was a fun posting. Where were you there? Um, I, when or where in India? Where I, we lived in Mumbai. Okay. So, um, Big city. yeah, that was we lived there. Loved it. Loved the the, the culture. I loved the work atmosphere. The people. Um, just a, it was a, it was a great the food. The food. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, I, I jokingly say I could I could eat it hotter than they could eat it. Being from South Louisiana or being from Louisiana, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and they're like, but I, I love the, the the food. But the people just are very um, friendly and happy and um you know we had, we had a great great time there my my kids uh, made friends there nice. that have lasted you know uh, beyond our our time there mm. um i was in russia for a bit in short-term assignments um traveled to japan saudi uh oman indonesia uh, malaysia uh, mexico um, i gotta be missing somewhere um yeah, quite quite a bit. And, I, and I, you know, I've always represented products being sold into oil field users, and I did work internationally a lot with a previous company. And uh, there's some challenges because some of these countries are very authoritarian, like in a very, uh, you know, what what any American would realize is socialist or communism, right? right. So things are, you've got to, it's, you're not going to work with business, you're going to work with government and seeing right. what they will allow you to do, right, right. as opposed to what you you can do so uh, i noticed but but that i think again you know working in so many different segments but working in so many different countries probably helps a lot is catalyst an international company yet or we're not yeah. um there's so Maybe much there's so much going here to be yeah, know, we, we've looked at, at that and we've um, had the opportunity to did some work international and we've got interest um, mm. from customers uh international that, that like the innovation that we've uh, been able to bring to the table and and have talked to us about the possibility of, of bringing our our equipment and and our technology to to their you know to their area. <clears throat> For us right now, it's just uh, you know we want to perfect what we have here. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the international markets are, as you, and you know, Jeff, they they can be a challenge. If it's not in the contract, you don't do it. Right? Yeah. And when you're dealing with um, with uh, some of these national oil companies, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But um, when you're when you're innovating when you're innovating and you're 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 in this the phase kind of where we are, um, we just think being here and, and being in this environment really suits our overall. Uh, uh, short-term plans, mm -hmm. medium-term plans better. allows us to better uh, serve serve who we want to serve and, and uh, continue to, to grow our, our technology. Okay. So Catalyst Energy, you get a call and tell me how that conversation went and tell me about Catalyst Energy. So, so um, the, the, the CEO, Bobby Chapman, called me and said, Seth, I've got this idea, you know, let's take a, let's take a turbine and hook it to a frack pump and um, we can make this work and uh, it took a little bit of convincing but I've got a ton of respect for Bobby we worked together at Halliburton um, he's been very successful had a long successful career and uh, we got together and started looking at some of the advantages of doing what he was talking about and, um, and I come from a, a background of technology and innovation and uh, as he does. And, and I said, you know, we can do this. It's going to be, it's going to require some, some, uh, some late, late nights and long hours, but, but we can make this work. And, um, uh, the advantages were just so, it, you know, by making it work, the advantages, uh, the benefits of it were so great. I said, we, we've got to try, you know, we've got to, got to do this. In the past, um, and, and you probably know this, and I'm sure a lot of your, your uh, listeners do, uh, we, we kind of solved the frack challenges just by throwing equipment at it. Mm -hmm. It's a very in capital intense, equipment intense endeavor. You know, we went from fracking at 20, 30, 40 barrels a minute to 100 barrels a minute. Those pressure shot from, you know, in the five, four, five, six thousand up into the you know, 10, 11, 12,000 and beyond. And um, Cut a whole so, three. so when you, <laughs> yeah, you look at the hydraulic horsepower it's required and the amount of equipment required is just incredible. And of course, the fuel consumption that goes with that, the people that goes with that, the maintenance that goes with that, all of the challenges that that operating on that kind of razor edge. Not to mention the aftermath problem. Uh, uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, um, and, and you know, people were looking at how do you save you know, how do you get 2% more efficient here? How do you save 2% there? And, and we looked at like, how did we make a step change? How can we go from something that truly is, is uh, you know, maybe a 20% uh, reduction in cost? I mean, that's a, that's a big number, right? How, yeah. do we, how do we make something that creates something that may have a 15, 20% capital advantage? That's a, mm. that's a big, again, a big, a big number. How do we reduce our, uh, we call it the number of feet and the number of tires on location, right? How do we yeah. shrink the size of equipment or the, the amount of equipment needed to, to, to complete a, a amount of work? And how do we take people out of harm's way by yeah. having less people? Yeah. Um, you know, putting less people in, in harm's way. Yeah. And then, so that was the goal in all of it. And, um, and it took a lot. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of of work if engineering can take people out of harm's way that's not correct. necessarily taking people out but taking them out of harm's way that's the yeah. that's really what you're looking for in engineering that's right. That's right. so um i guess you know because a lot every everyone listening is not an oil and gas person sure so uh could you give like a what i would say is just a brief if you were describing it to someone who was a uh, computer science guy in north carolina how would you describe what Catalyst does? Okay, so yeah, that's a great question. Because um, a lot of level people listening are yeah, so, little people, right? So, um, you know, in, in the last uh, probably, let's say 15 years or so, um, the industry has gone to drilling um, shale wells. Mm -hmm. um, you'll hear that term used a mm -hmm. lot. And uh, there's a lot of oil uh, and gas that's entrapped in these shale formations. Mm -hmm. Problem is, is they don't like to give that oil and gas up very well. Mm -hmm. um, they they have porosity, but they don't have a lot of permeability, um, meaning that the oil doesn't like to flow out of that 
trapped zone very well. So um, some of the pioneers of the industry uh, figured out how to, to hydraulically fracture those wells, and fracture just means crack it, mm -hmm. um, take pressure, uh, take pumps, create pressure, crack that shale, mm -hmm. and pump something, um, some type of propper in there. We usually use sand. Mm -hmm. um, we crack that, we pump it out, and when that, when that fracture tries to close, that sand holds that fracture open. And it creates a, let's call it a long-term path for that oil and gas to flow out of. Okay. And um, so at a high level, that's what hydraulic fracturing is. Okay. Um, and I'm, I apologize if it's if I'm speaking too elementary. No, no, but, no. But, uh, it's just, you know, you know, people that, you know, are listening, I'd say, I'd say the majority of my listeners are probably somewhere in the oil and gas world. Right. Uh, tend to be a lot of safety people, of course, but uh, they're somewhere in the oil and gas world, but some of them aren't. So I've got listeners. How I know that is because... I can see when I look at where my podcasts are downloaded, they're in countries where there is no oil and gas. Right, right. There's no oil and gas in Ireland, but some, there's some people that are listening this, to my podcast. Thank you, people in Ireland, by the way. <laughs> right. uh, but, uh, but okay, so, um, you know, we talked earlier um, about some, uh, some new technology you guys were working on. Um, I'd like you to, you know, tell the audience, you know, I think our audience is very interested in anything that improves anything, right? The oil and gas industry is always up against everything with, uh, with, with in society with PR and the fight against them. So when you make strides that improve things, it's fun to talk about. It's fun yes. to get it out there, right? So you've guys got some technology, and I'm not going to butcher it and even try to talk about it. But you've got guys got some technology that improves waste, it improves efficiency, it improves you know everything with to do with the environment from head to toe. Can you can you want to go ahead and tell sure. me about that? Sure. So we. Um, you know, the beauty of starting a, a company is you kind of get to start with a, a blank sheet, mm -hmm. you know, canvas, so to speak. Sure. And, and we looked at technologies that were out there and we said, okay, here's conventional. This is kind of what's been going on for the last bunch of years. And, and um, you know, electric frack was, was kind of coming into play at that time. Mm -hmm. And we, we looked at that and we, we liked that, that technology. Um, I started my career in 1984 and we were using electric um, motors to turn pumps back in 1984 so that's not a it's not necessarily something new now doing it on the scale that they were doing it today is is, is was, or back then four years ago was a something relatively new mm -hmm. um, uh, we looked at um, some of the gas uh, blending type um, some of the biofuel units sure. they call where they take yeah. natural gas and diesel and and put those in an internal combustion engine uh, together and, and reduce the amount of diesel that's burned and those can have some exhaust uh, emissions advantage. We looked at that um, and then we looked at what we originally kind of the idea was which was taking a, a, a gas turbine, um, a military grade gas turbine and connecting that directly to a frack pump through a drivetrain, yeah. know, through gearing and a drivetrain. It had been tried before when and, and by a couple companies and there was there was some level of, of, of success, but but more of a commercial. I hate to use the word failure, but you know they did they couldn't make it work at a commercial level. Okay. Um, and so we started with what we knew and what we didn't know, and, and said let's let's create something that really um, solves those problems and, um, and and has advantages. The first, really for us, was the fuel fuel part. Now, I'd love to tell you, and I know this is your podcast, so mm. that we started with this great moment of ESG, and we were just, man, we were, you know, we had ESG tattooed on our arms, and reality is that we were on the E side, and, and, I, and I don't mean the environmental, but the economics. Like, look, mm. a fleet's burning, you know, can burn two, two and a half million dollars, a couple million dollars a month in fuel. And if we can burn natural gas instead of diesel, and some of this natural gas is being flared just to get rid of it. Yeah. So we can take a waste product um, or a nuisance product yeah. and repurpose it. Um, that's got a great economic benefit to our customers. And so we're making, you know, we're, we're so making you're capturing, the, you're capturing the natural gas on site that typically would have 
been flared off or burnt off, is they what they call it, and you're using that to fuel the actual. Yeah, that that in, in theory, that's what you're doing. Now, okay. typically, we're running, uh, we're burning a CNG, a compressed natural gas, and it okay. may come from very close by. It may come from you know, it's regional for sure. So mm. usually, very close proximity, you know, eight, ten, twelve miles or so away. But mm. in any case, it's usually going to be something that was um. Uh, in a lot of cases, that would be, you know, um, flared or, or disposed of in some sort of way. Um, and it was just an advantage, right? There's a there's a, an economic advantage to taking that natural gas and, and creating work with it, creating horsepower yeah. with it. An environmental versus, advantage. And, 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 and then we got to look at it. It's like, wow, this is an environmental advantage yeah, absolutely. as well. So again, uh, in full full transparency, that wasn't our first thought, but in the back of our mind, we knew it was, but that yeah. wasn't a driver back then. Yeah. And then comes along COVID, and all of a sudden, a lot of our company, you know, customers are saying, "Hey, we want, we want this environmental. We want something. We've got to do better. Mm. We, the industry's got to police itself. We've got to do better. Uh, let, let's come up with a way to to be uh, impactful in the emissions that we create." And, um, and the industry started noticing the advantages of, of replacing some of the liquid fuels with natural gas. Um, so that became, you know, we were, I guess we were lucky in that regard, maybe fortunate that, that, that we, you know, we were on that, on that path. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our typical fleet of uh, our units are called Vortex Prime. And a okay. plug for the name, that's uh, a cool name, everybody. It's like Transformers. I was about to say. And, um, <laughs> that's a great Transformer uh, name. So we, we, we love the name. But um, uh, uh, those units, we, it takes eight of those, replace a typical 20 diesel units. Okay. So um, the amount of work that used to take 20 units to do, we do the same amount of work with eight. Okay. So we have less traffic up and down the road. Mm. We're rolling less through school zones and little communities and less wear and tear on roads and all those kind of secondary benefits that, yeah. you know, that the technology. But it's real. Has. But it's real. It, yeah. it adds up. Um, then, then these units are um, uh, turbines air cooled. So there's mm. not a lot of, there's not uh, coolant. Um, the, <laughs> the oil that goes into the turbine, um, you change it based on, um, uh, sampling of the oil and, and almost it can last uh, a long time versus our diesel units have to be changed uh, on, on periodic cycles and, and with an internal combustion engine you get dirt and you get sure. contaminants in your oil and and we started looking at the waste stream and you know 97 98 percent reduction in the waste stream so less trips to the landfills with filters and and boxes and less trips to the recycling center to dispose of oils and coolants and all of that stuff. Um, so another big advantage, an environmental advantage of this of this um, technology. So you had a pretty exact number there. You guys actually studied this and looked at it. it you know, it's odd, Jeff, is we, um, I kind of had the idea and I put a spreadsheet together, real rudimentary, you know, uh, just kind of some columns and rows. And, and um, I, I looked at the numbers that didn't believe them. Yeah. And I sent them off to our, our engineer, district engineer, who's a lot younger than me, and 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 he, he his attention for detail is probably a little bit better than mine on that stuff. And he came back. He said, "No, you're, you're right. This is this is where it is." Serious. And um, I said, "Hey, that's a story, and it's a good story." Big story. Um, and again, I'd love to tell you we started the company with that in mind. We really didn't. We did. We didn't know that it was going to be so profound yeah. of a difference, but it, it was. Um, then we started looking at again the, the feet. Like how many people do we need? Well, this this fleet we can we can get by with less less people. Yeah. Um, so you know, frac has gotten to where it's uh, hydraulic fracturing, pressure pumping, what whatever the the term uh, that people like here. Uh, we've gotten where it's it's safer. We've had a great run on safety, and, yeah. uh, and a lot of our I think the industry has overall has has had some pretty good improvements over the last. You know, ten years, but anytime we can have less people there, uh, there's an obviously an economic advantage in that in labor cost. Well, I think uh, you know, looking at your uh, history, um, you were at Key during the years I worked for Ringers Gloves for years, okay. yeah. and uh, Key went from back in the day, you know, where before people made the 
you know, the jump to impact gloves, cut resistant right. gloves. It was just cotton, right? right? And there was an enormous amount of hand injuries. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I remember it. It was, and I, it may be slightly before your time there, but it was right around that time when Keith, and it wasn't, you know, anything but other than just, I mean, you're talking about a giant leap in right. safety, right? And so they went from cotton to impact protection gloves, and in, uh, injuries went 80-something percent down yeah. from one piece of technology. Yeah. And, you know, I think Key was, Key and Exxon, I'd say of, of the majors, Exxon was the first one to jump on that. Right. And then Key jumped on that uh, as one of the first yep. service companies, I guess what you call, to do that and realize how important it was to not leave the workers behind. Right. Uh, and and, and when, to, when, you're, when you're making everything else technologically better, there's still oil field injuries. And you try to, you try to, you try to, because it's hard work, man. It is. It's, it's brutal is. work out there. Those guys are, yeah. and ladies. That's right. A lot of yeah. ladies out there yeah. doing doing this thing, and it's brutal work. It's hard. It's dangerous in a lot of cases, especially especially when the weather gets inclement, right? And so it's nice to see, you know, a lot of, you know, in addition to going the route you guys are going, it's it's nice to see, you know, companies like yours taking a taking a, a route that says, okay. There's two ways or three, you know, a few ways to prevent injuries to these guys and girls. And and it's one is uh, put better equipment in their hands, safety and things like that, or, you know, gloves and things like that. But another one is engineering them out of danger zones, which is probably the best uh, scenario. So when you guys like you can come up with something that engineers them out of dangerous areas, well, then you lower your injuries. And injuries are incredibly impactful as long as the environment as well, because you got people walking that that person creates a certain amount of uh, output, right? And if they're gone, that output isn't there. Yeah. And, and look, you know, we it, people talk about the economic impact of it. I, uh, you know, at this point in my career, I look at kind of the human impact yeah. of it and the morale. And you know, when people get hurt, and you, if, if you know, the, if, if there's if the work environment's not considered safe, then that impacts morale, and that becomes. Uh, kind of a snowball that affects a lot of other uh, parts of your business. Yeah. Uh, in our case, um, one of the most um, intense things that we do is rigging this equipment up, connecting it to the to the to the well. Usually, mm-hmm. there's some manifold and there's a series of treating iron, and you you rig up these pumps, and it's it's heavy pieces of iron, and you you know hammer them together, connect them together some through some way or another, and um, and before we would rig up 20 of them and you know it's hard on backs it's hard on knees mm-hmm. it's slip trips and falls and you're you know we don't always w- operate on concrete right it's yeah. it's muddy it's nasty it's some days it's 100 and whatever and other days it's it's, it's, it's got ice it's, on the ground it's ice on the ground mm-hmm. so uh you know you 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 that becomes a big challenge well well now we're doing uh, you know, a lot less of those, mm-hmm. eight, eight versus, you know, 60% reduction in the amount of rig up. So, um, our, you know, and I, again, it was one of those things that I knew would be advantage just in my mind and come intuitively, I knew it would be an advantage, but our QHSE director came to me and he's like, this is great. We're reducing the risk just because we're reducing the amount of exposure. Mm-hmm. And um, Well, and you know, so, you, something you mentioned that you didn't make a lot, you know, you kind of, uh, mentioned it in passing was the amount of trucks off the road. Well, for him, your HSC manager, that's his biggest worry. That's right. Drivers. Yep. Um, in in number one, the conditions are bad already. They're driving in, but number two, they work a lot. Right. So they're tired a lot. That's right. You know, so that you know, you got to really watch out because people they're all tough out there. They are, and they didn't. Sometimes they they're t- they they think they're tougher than they actually are, and they can survive being that sleepy, and, and it's okay. Sometimes they can't, and so it causes right. accidents. So keep, when you mention keeping people off of the road, right. that is a safety issue. It it's is a big safety issue, not just to the oil field workers, but to the community as a whole. He'll be the first to tell you, Stan, Stan Boatwright, our, mm-hmm. our director, that, and, and you, you've heard it from a bunch of others, but driving is the most dangerous thing we do. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's crazy, and, and being able to, to reduce that in an appreciable amount is, is, has an advantage. Yeah. Um, so we're we're excited about that. The emission side of of this technology uh, is good as well. We're our turbines are small, mm-hmm. so they're relatively small. It's it's kind of it's 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 pretty neat, Jeff. They're you know less than five foot long. They weigh twelve hundred pounds. I'd say me and you could pick one up. We couldn't, but you know me and you and mm-hmm. a few of our friends could. 
to pick one up. It fit in the bed of a pickup, you know, mm. and um, that creates, you know, over 5,000 horsepower. So she got this small little, you know, like dynamo of, of power. And, um, but the, it, it, the emissions from it versus a, a big 20,000 pound, you know, 15 foot long internal combustion diesel engine that's, you know, half that horsepower or less. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. We used to talk about it, and I've been at this industry, been been here long enough. I can I can say it. And some of your young listeners, this may not resonate with them, but we used to find our frack fleets by the plume of smoke on the horizon, right? Because mm. in the old early days, some of the before there was a lot of uh, um, effort given to emissions. Um, you know, those things are just pouring out black smoke, right? You could just kind of see it's it off learning. in the distance and just drive toward the the smoke plume and you're there was a fleet over there somewhere maybe it was your fleet that's not that it, long ago it's not all that long ago yeah. it's not all that long and and now i mean it's clear it's clean nice. um and and that's good for our industry it's good for it's good for it's, uh, it's good it's good for all of us mm -hmm. uh, even those not in our industry and I'm, I'm proud of that and this this technology even takes that to an, 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 another level well i think the um the crisis in uh, in europe this year kind of proved a point that oil and gas is not going away, yeah. that the alternative energies, you know, great idea. Some of them do well right. enough. Some of them are improving uh, leaps and bounds, but the world cannot run off of alternative energy yet. And oil and gas is here to stay, and it's here to stay for quite a while. Right. So it's important not to just, as a country, to focus on, you know, building these oil and gas, um, are building these alternative and putting everything we have into that, but also to making technology of fossil fuels better, which is, you know, this entire discussion was about, you know, you, you said you are big into innovation, you're big into technology, you're big into things. How many patents do you have? I've got a few. Um, we, we're, we're at, at Catalyst, uh, you know, we, we've got quite a few pending we're proud of. And okay. Hopefully. Um, I read a number. It was a big number. You said quite a few. So what's the, you don't do you remember the actual number? I can't remember. So, you know, we've got some that are, we're waiting to issue some pending um, mm -hmm. here. Um, uh, myself in a previous life, I, you know, I, I, and they're not, they're not related to this technology, sure. obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm talking about you personally here. No, not your, not for you know, I need, I probably need to, I, I need to, to run the numbers on, I think six or seven, something like that. Okay. So, look, and that's small. Oh, right. So when the, look, the guys, and it's funny when I was with um, when I was with bed. another company, um, that you know, uh, I, I would be in a room and you know, the technology guys, and they're you know, uh, you know, tens and tens, and some of them over, you know, it's crazy, 70, 80, 90 patents. I felt I, I felt pretty inadequate at that. Yeah, it's always a bigger, you know? bigger. Oh yeah, but, you know, and they're some of the most humble guys. You yeah. know, just easy going, and and oh, you know, I just you know just patented this new new device like wow that is so cool and, and patents um, are and people you know i've been trying to get some things patented in the past and uh patents are difficult yeah. incredibly difficult you just don't put something and say hey this is new it has to be i forget the uh, you know demonstrably different yeah it, uh, it's, it's a bit of a challenge and yeah. i think it's probably getting harder and harder in yeah. our space i mean that's the feeling i get i don't yeah. know if the if the statistics or some of the um, experts would agree with that, but it seems to be um, uh, harder and harder. Well, we consider ourselves an innovative company. We've yeah. got a lot of guys and we're and gals, and we're always talking about how do we do something different, and hey, what about this, and what about that, and and um, that's that's been the fun part of this when you're yeah. around people that that challenge everything. And yeah. look, they challenge. I got, and sometimes that's in, in, you know that's 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 a blessing and a curse. At times, yeah. it's like okay. Let's let's save the world tomorrow. Today we just need to fix this one one thing. The, the but, way things always were can be the real enemy to a progress progress of a company. That's right. It can be, and, right. but uh, but you're right. Sometimes the the idea of constant disruption and pressure can yeah, that can go too far as well. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just like uh, you know, as you mentioned earlier in the conversation, perfect what you're doing. Right. Right, and that's important because, you know, that's what people are looking for. They're looking for you to be great at what you do and not decent at a lot of things. Yeah. So, I think for us, that's been a big, a big part of it. You know, we we started down the path. We created a prototype. We took that prototype to market. Um, 
and we operated it and you learn. I mean, that's part of why you have a prototype, right? Is you, you learn kind of what works and what you need to tweak. And, and um, we came back and um, tweaked a few things and, and it was kind of a, it's a, uh, you know, process that you, it's kind of never ending. It's an iterative process where you, you look at things that need to be, uh, uh, some of the software, for example, I, I equate it to like your iPhone. You're always getting some type of update, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's been, um, uh, that's just part of it. Um, what, what really for us, and I, we kind of feel like, uh, Bobby and I feel like we're a bit behind, um, and I don't, I've never like playing the role of the victim and I don't want this to sound like that, but man, COVID really wrecked us from a global supply chain. Oh yeah. You know, we, we, um, we get these components and we build the units ourselves. So it's our design. Um, and, uh, all the, the, the design is totally catalyst design, but these components come from, from outside. Uh, a lot of them do. And a lot of them are, are, they have sub components that come from all over the world. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when we got ready to, to take off and go commercial and, and really kind of full tilt, then all of a sudden we had this, because of COVID, we had this global supply chain just meltdown. Um, and and we had to get through that. I think we're mostly through it now. There are some things that are still longer lead times than probably sh- they should be. Um, but it's coming back to some level of normalcy. Yeah. Um, that for a while it was it was a challenge every every day so. is the oil and gas industry seeing any uh reshoring happening is there so is somebody is, is any or a percentage of your supply chain reshoring back to the united states that may have been uh international before um i'm i'm not sure the industry as a whole i don't know that i can speak to that because i'm so focused right now on catalyst mm-hmm. But I do believe that um, in our space, some of the companies that we've been dealing with and talking to, um, some of our partners are starting to think more and more about shoring back yeah. to the U.S. And, and they're doing it. Yeah, uh, we've seen it now as a whole. I can I can give you a, a, a you know I don't have a, a good handle on that as a percentage, but I do know some things that have come back to the U.S. Uh, just and I'm not. I'd love to think it's because I'm. That's better product and all that. I think it's more for control, just yeah. the, the control aspect of it. I don't uh, just it's, not being in the, in the position we were in. I mean, when the, when 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 something like that happens again, and you right. can't be dependent for eighty percent of your products overseas, yeah. you can operate. Well, it could come and, from a country like China that just shut uh, down. And the you know the Russian Ukrainian war. I mean that had that had a disruption. Mm-hmm. Um, and the crisis that went on in Europe, that's yeah. had a, a disruption. I've had a, I have a factory in South Africa, and it is the Ukrainian yep. part has really disturbed everything for that factory. Right. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it, it, people, you know, if you're not in supply chain and not don't have to deal with it, it's, I mean, any little wrinkle just blows the whole thing to pieces. It has to operate perfectly in every segment or else well, it goes it, to hell. It, it, it's, it, you're right. It's the trickle, trickle down or, mm-hmm. or, you know, effect of, you know, one piece of uh, uh, material that's manufactured and or, or mined and, and uh, uh, made in some country that's needed for a final component mm-hmm. three countries later, mm-hmm. and that the disruption of that material sets off the chain of events yeah. that, that pushes that out so far. And we 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 saw that we lived yeah. that. So, uh, well. Um- uh, Seth, what what does uh, what what does uh, I guess 2023 look like for Catalyst? Is there anything any, any news coming? Any uh, big growth opportunities? Any, any news you'd like to share with us? Or I, I think we're you know at a, at a high level we're looking forward to a very robust year. Nice. Um, it's going to be a growth year for us. I think it'll be a breakout year for us. Mm. Um, we're excited about where we are with our technology. Um, we're excited about the opportunities for the future. Um, if we can kind of keep some of the tailwinds and bad, I think it'll be be great for for us and, and others too. I think that I think the industry Should we're, be. we're looking for a, as it is going to be a, a positive year, um, not only for the industry but certainly where we play. Um, I think uh, we're going to continue to innovate. Um, we're looking at at uh, uh, other areas that have um, opportunity for. 
for market improvement mm-hmm. in, in terms of efficiency and fuel consumption and safety and um, and those the, those aspects. So, uh, any plans to move out of the Permian or just stay in the Permian? Um, you know, if if given the right opportunities with the right partner, yeah. uh, I, I don't use that word. That word gets tossed around a lot, um, but I think if we have a, a partner that would um, would want to uh, to grow with us and 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 likes our technology and um, would give us an opportunity to, to keep it working, we would certainly consider that. So, uh, and where can the listeners learn more about Catalyst? So we're um, you know we've got a website yeah. there and there's 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 quite a few articles out. And there's a few I mean, guys like you have helped us get our, our message out. Um, what's, what's the website? Uh, it's it's a cat, Catalyst Energy Services. Catalystenergyservices.com. Okay. Um, there's information yeah. on the new turbine-driven. Yes, there's also. there's information there. Okay. I think there's um awesome. there's there's we've got a great group of um, sales and marketing group that'll get out and, and they they love the opportunity to meet people and yeah. talk to people. Um, I'm I'm glad we built that team up, especially recently, and uh, and uh, I've I've been playing in that role a bit. I'm glad to see them. I'll hand the reins off to to people. Uh, Probably, probably a lot better suited. I know a lot better suited at that than I am. But, um, but yeah, there, there's we, we love love the opportunity to come talk to people about about it, and uh, we truly think it's different, it's innovative, and uh, it all it offers a lot in, in the ways of, of ESG. And uh, the beauty of it is, is we know we can deliver significant savings to our customer, and that makes it easy, right? Yeah. From an ESG perspective, I mean, when when something costs. 20, 30, 50% more, okay, then you've got to really be bought into ESG to want to pay more for something, it's right? It's got to be worth something, um, whether it be money or something, it's got to be worth but, something. But when there's technology that will provide those benefits at a cost savings, that makes that's it pretty easy. That's the best of world. Yeah, that's right. It makes it pretty easy. So, hmm. um, Well, that sounds great. Sir, you know, I know it's a busy week and a busy day, but uh, thank you for having me here at your office. Uh, thank uh, you for well, thank you for welcoming me here. Everybody is incredibly nice here. And thank you for the, the information you're sharing and, and the positive impact your company is making. And uh, we look forward to the podcast here in a couple of weeks. Everyone can listen. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show and accept the mission. Please subscribe to the Mission Zero podcast on your preferred streaming service. And be sure to give us a five-star review.